Welcome back. Let's start off with the MCQs straight away. Which four are included in a make or buy decision? Now we know that under make cost, there are three items. One is a variable cost. The second is a specific fixed cost. And the third one is a lost cash inflow. If these items fall under any of these three categories, then we have to include it in a make or buy decision. And the next item that you have to consider is the buying cost. Buying cost is nothing but the purchase price that you have to pay for the product if you are purchasing it from the open market. So if any of these four items comes in this list, then we have to include. And in case it is an item which does not figure in this list, that is the making cost list and the buying cost, then we have to go by the relevant costing principles. What are the relevant costing principles? It should be related to cash flows. That is, it should either be a cash outflow or a lost cash inflow, and it should be related to the future, and it should be incremental or an additional expense. If all the three conditions are satisfied, then again, we have to consider it as a make or buy decision. Why I ask you to consider the relevant costing features is because the questions can be modified in any way. So your guiding principle should always be the relevant costing features, but this is just for your easy reference, that is making cost and the buying cost format. Now we will take each item one by one. Reallocated rent by using the production space differently. Reallocated rent is not something that is figuring in the making cost and the buying cost list. Now we will go to the relevant costing features. Is it incremental? It is just a reallocated rent. Whatever rent that we were paying earlier, we are paying now also. It is not an additional expense. It remains the same, whether we make or whether we buy. So basically it's not incremental and it does not satisfy one of the primary features of relevant cost and hence it should not be included for a make or buy decision. Moving to the second item, Variable cost of purchase from the new supplier and the discounts available from the new supplier. These are two items that affects the buying cost. So it definitely should be included. So both these items should be included. Now, the redundancy payments to supervisor of the product. Now, this is an item which is not figuring in our main list. So we will go to the features of relevant costing. Now, what exactly is redundancy payments? Redundancy payments are those payments which are made to workers when they are terminated, when they are no longer required. So suppose we are buying the component from outside, then we are not making it in-house. So all the workers who were involved in the making of the component will be terminated and we will have to pay them redundancy payments. So they are asking you whether such kind of redundancy payments should be included in a make or buy decision. So since it is not included in the list, we will go by the relevant costing principles. Now, is it a cash flow? Yes, redundancy payment is a cash outflow. We have to physically pay cash to the laborers who are terminated. Is it related to the future? Yes, it is related to the future. It is not a past cost or a sunk cost. And is it incremental? Yes. It is an additional expense which we are going to incur because of our decision to stop the manufacturing of the particular product. Why are we paying redundancy payment? Because we decided not to manufacture the product, correct? So it is directly related to our decision in hand, which means that all the three features of relevant cost are getting satisfied and hence redundancy payments will be included in a make or buy decision. Now, the saved labor cost of staff redirected to other work. It just means that whatever labor cost we are paying now will still have to be paid for the other work. So we are not gaining or losing anything. It is not satisfying the basic feature of incremental. It's not different since the basic feature of incremental or additional expense is not getting satisfied. We will not include the saved labor cost. Materials no longer bought to manufacture the product. What do you mean by the materials no longer bought? That is nothing but the purchase cost of the materials. Purchase cost of the materials will definitely figure under variable cost. When we are making the product, we are definitely considering purchase cost of the raw materials which are used for making. That will come under variable cost. So definitely this will also be included. So finally, what are the four items that will be included in a make or buy decision? The variable cost of purchase from the new supplier, the discounts available from the new supplier because it affects the buying cost, the redundancy payment to supervisor because it satisfies all the three features of relevant costing 
and it has resulted because of our decision to stop the production of the component. And finally, materials no longer bought to manufacture the product because it is included under the variable cost in the making cost list. Now, moving on to the second MCQ. Please considering whether to make or buy a component. It uses 12,000 units of the component each year. Internal manufacturing cost comprises. So you have direct material, direct labor, variable overheads, specific fixed cost, and other fixed costs. If direct labor were not used to manufacture the component, it would be used to increase the production of another item for which there is unlimited demand, which means that opportunity cost is involved. This other item has a contribution of $10 per unit, but requires $8 of labor per unit. What is the maximum price per component at which the buying is preferable to internal manufacture? So what are they asking you? What is the maximum buying cost or what is the maximum purchase price that we can afford to pay? We cannot pay any amount exceeding the making cost. If you pay any amount exceeding the making cost, then it will not be profitable. So the maximum buying cost that we can afford to pay is the making cost. So first we have to find out what the making cost is. So let's write the format of the making cost. So variable cost, direct material, direct labor, and variable overheads are all variable cost. So it is three plus four plus one, which means that $8 is the variable cost. So we key in that amount in the list. And the specific fixed cost, they have given separately $2.5. So we include that also. Other fixed cost should not be included simply because it's not a specific fixed cost. It is a general fixed cost. It is not satisfying the basic feature of relevant costing. That is, it will not be incremental between the options. Whether we make the product or whether we buy the product, we will still have to incur the other fixed cost. Now coming to the third part, the lost cash inflow or the opportunity cost. What have they said about the other product? The other item has a contribution of $10 per unit but requires $8 of labor per unit. They have not given the direct labor hours, but they have given the direct labor cost. So what we will do is we will find out what is the contribution per dollar of labor. That is, if you are incurring $1 as labor cost, what is the contribution that we get from the other product? So we shall make a note of it. Contribution is $10 when we incur $8 as labor cost for the other product. So what is the contribution for $1 of labor cost? It is 10 divided by 8 or 1.25 will be the contribution. That is, if you are incurring $1 as labor cost for making the other product, then we will get 1.25 as contribution. Now for the product that we are going to make, how much labor cost are we incurring? dollar four per unit that is if we are not incurring this direct labor cost then we will use it for making this other item just because we are incurring dollar four for this component what is the contribution that we are losing for each dollar that you invest in the other product you are getting a contribution of 1.25 so for four dollar the contribution that we will be losing is 1.25 multiplied by four so that's what i've written here amounting to $5. So that is the contribution lost from the other product just because we are making this component. So that's nothing but the opportunity cost or the lost cash inflow. So we shall key in $5 per unit as lost cash inflow and the total making cost comes to $15.5. So what has been asked, what is the maximum price per component at which buying is preferable to internal manufacture? So what is the maximum buying cost that we can incur? We can incur up to 15.5. So that's the final answer. The maximum price per component at which buying is preferable to internal manufacture is $15.5 per unit.